President Biden this week said that Russia is celebrating, as he said, celebrating Congress's inability to pass funding for Ukraine. The White House says it is willing to compromise on border policy in order to obtain from Congress that Ukraine aid. Earlier today, I spoke with National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications, John Kirby. I want to read to you a lead paragraph produced in Moscow by the Associated Press about President Vladimir Putin's question and answer session today. Quote, Emboldened by battlefield gains and flagging Western support for Ukraine, a relaxed and confident President Vladimir Putin said Thursday there would be no peace until Russia achieved its goals, which he says remain unchanged after nearly two years of fighting. Admiral Kirby, is there anything in that AP lead paragraph with which you disagree? I don't think there's any reason why Mr. Putin should feel emboldened by battlefield successes because he hasn't achieved any significant battlefield successes uh, for many, many, many months. In fact, the Ukrainians have, with our help and assistance and those of like 50 other countries, clawed back more than 50 percent of the territory that, that the Russians took uh, in the early months uh, of the war. So while his strategic goals haven't changed, his ability to achieve them are, are no, are, he's nowhere closer. That said, and this is an important point, Major, his goals haven't changed. And that should give us all pause for how long he might be willing to continue to, con to, to strike at civilian infrastructure to kill Ukrainian soldiers and fight uh, units on the ground in the east and in the south. And that's why that supplemental funding request that we've got up on Capitol Hill is so important, because his goals haven't changed. We've got to make sure that the Ukrainians have what they need to continue to defend themselves and to claw back even more territory. Admiral Kirby, you know well the House of Representatives has left for its Christmas work period or recess. That means the status of that supplemental funding request is at best in limbo, possibly dead until the new year. Your reaction? Well, it's a dangerous time of the year to be walking away from Ukraine. Uh, this is not the time to go home for the holidays and to have eggnog. This is the time to step up and prove to the world and to Mr. Putin that we mean what we say when it's not okay for him to invade a neighboring nation. Our strong message to uh, those uh, House Republicans who decided to hold hostage Ukraine funding is stay in town, do the critical work. We're willing to sit down at the table and negotiate over issues like the border. This is now not the time to be walking away from Ukraine. But they've left Admiral Kirby. They're already gone. Well, that's, uh, I, I understand that. Uh, we, we'd like to see him come back and we'd like to see him sit down and do what's right for Ukraine. Uh, this is, again, a, cr a critical time of the year, critical, critical months ahead here. Uh, and as I also said, the president and our team are willing to sit down and negotiate. We're willing to have uh, a constructive conversation about border security and even border policy. Uh, but you can't do that if the other partner decides to walk away. Admiral Kirby, is it possible that there would still be some money to assist Ukraine through the early part of this year, meaning if Congress came back and got this done, let's say the first, second, maybe third week of January, there well, would we, not be a gap? There would still be a gap. That said, we have enough funding left to get us probably some additional security assistance to Ukraine before the end of this year. And it will take some time, uh, days, maybe even a, 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 a weeks, before all of that gets to Ukraine. So if we were able to get funding very early on in January, uh, it's safe to assume that we could continue to flow uh, in a relatively uninterrupted way. Thus, thus far, Major, we've been providing security assistance about every two weeks. So if we have another bout that we can get in uh, before the end of this month, if we can do something by early to mid-January, that would keep up that, uh, that rotation and it would certainly help uh, there be an uninterrupted flow. From the vantage point of the White House, was it a mistake to put Ukraine, Israel, and border issues together? No. No, they're all in together because they all are urgent emergency needs by the United States for our national security. And what's going on in Ukraine affects our national security, same as what goes on in Israel and obviously down at the, at the border. All of these were legitimate uh, requests uh, that, uh, that the administration made based on critical national security needs. No, we don't regret that at all. And again, Major, we're willing. Uh, to have a good faith negotiation uh, over border security and immigration policy. Several House Republicans have told me if the policy concessions now on the table had been communicated a month ago, this deal might have gotten done, and they blame the White House for waiting so long to get to the table and seriously negotiate. Your response? 
Uh, look, I, I'd let the House Republicans speak for themselves on that. I mean, uh, we put this supplemental request uh, on the Hill back in October. I mean, this isn't something well, without new. the policy concessions, Admiral Kirby, you know that that was money, not policy. We put the supplemental request back in October. We said then we're willing to have a serious conversation. Um, uh, you know, if, if they're serious, uh, then they wouldn't have left for Christmas. Interesting. When the president said earlier this week that there had been indiscriminate bombing by Israel in Gaza, what did he mean? He's talking about uh, concerns, genuine concerns that we've had uh, about uh, the Israelis' um, intent to minimize civilian casualties and yet not have always the results and the outcomes to that effect. And that there have been many thousands uh, of innocent Palestinians killed and many, many thousands more wounded. And we want to see no civilian casualties. That's the right number, zero. Uh, and so he's expressing a genuine concern that we've had and that we've expressed to our Israeli counterparts uh, about being more surgical, more precise, more deliberate, more cautious uh, in how they're going after uh, legitimate Hamas targets. This administration believes in a two-state solution. Do you believe the Netanyahu administration does as well? I'll let Mr. Netanyahu speak for, uh, for his own intents here. I can only tell you that President Biden still believes that in the promise um, and the potential of a two-state solution. We understand that that's going to be elusive right now, that we're not close to getting there. Uh, but in conversations that Jake Sullivan, who was in Riyadh yesterday, had with the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, it was clear that the Saudis are willing to move forward on this idea of normalization between the two countries. Again, we're, we're not close to that. It's not going to happen anytime soon. But that's an important step to, to getting maybe to a two-state solution. But here's the thing, Major. A two-state solution is going to require leadership on both sides on the Israeli side and the Palestinian side, the right kind of leadership, leadership that's willing to be transformative, leadership that is willing to see peace and security for the Israeli people and for the Palestinian people. President Biden's not giving up on that hope, um, and he's not giving up on uh, the conversation that we're willing to have with leaders on both sides about being those kinds of leaders. Admiral John Kirby with the National Security Council. Thank you so very much for your time. Thank you.